this is not your father's Republican Party. Um, that, that what has happened is that the, the Trumpist big lie has taken over the mainstream of the Republican Party. Last week we saw, I brought it back with me. We talked about it on the air last week. I carry it with me. We saw the esteemed Senate Judiciary Committee minority senators saying that Trump did not exercise improper influence on DOJ or his concerns centered on legitimate complaints, Chris. They turned reality upside down. He exercised improper influence nine times, the majority <laughs> found. So, and Kevin McCarthy is among the worst. Uh, I welcomed him when I was uh, an ambassador of the United States. He came to Prague. Uh, that's not the Kevin McCarthy that we know. He is embracing this insurrectionist uh, 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 dogma of ex-President Trump. It is so dangerous for America if these individuals get power. I just, they're just clips of legal scholars. That's Norm Eisen. It's just clips of, uh, you know, Adam Schiff, uh, you know, who is a, a, a House member with a law degree, constitutional scholars, Jamie Raskin, um, you know, just telling you, just just looking you in the face. This is not a John Gruber situation. OK, John Gruden is a backstabbing liar. He wrote this nasty, racist, misogynist, hateful stuff down and he put it in emails. He's just the fall guy. You understand I just switched subjects to football. You understand what I'm saying, though. But uh, these people are, are are literally, you know, like backstabbing everybody, everybody. It's like it's like the new way of conducting yourself. It's just to backstab people. Just I, I don't I don't even understand. I mean, I do understand how America got brainwashed. I do understand, you know, like uh, the, the 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 violent nature that's been like whipped up, you know, and <clears throat> and 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 sold as being okay. Being violent is okay, being uh, aggressive, being a bully is okay, being a racist is okay, uh talking uh, trash about women is okay. You know, all this stuff is it's cool, it's good, it's okay. I get that on social media, it's it's sort of being whipped up, and it's 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 people get attaboys for it, and they get you know uh, wrapped up in 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 the the groupthink of the haters and the groupthink of the people who don't wish us well, who are you know responding to them or feeding them more bad information and just I get I get what's happening, I understand what's happening, you know, and I and I obviously have told you that the remedy for what's going on with regard to the the violence and the bullying and the organization around destroying your own government and the the manufacturing of uh, resentment and turning it into a useful tool to overthrow this government so it's not quite so messy so you just have a dictator or an autocrat or an oligarch or whatever you want to call that person it won't be a democracy anymore but everybody is warning you everyone is telling you everybody is sounding the alarm this is one of those moments this is one of those moments where it's you and you. It's just you and you. That's all there is. You know, the solution for the social media is it's, it's pretty straightforward. We, you, you don't do anything about free speech. You never say, oh, you can't post or you're removed or, you know, you don't cancel people's accounts or take them down because... As we've seen, they go to even more virulent platforms, okay? They just leave, a, they're kicked off of one platform, and they end up on Gab. They get kicked off of the this Facebook, and they end up on Getter. They get kicked off of Twitter, and they end up on Parler. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's not a solution. The solution to what ails us, which is disinformation and giving attaboys for really ugly, bad behavior, there really is a dopamine rush when you post something ugly, really heinous, and people give you a like, or people respond to you and say, I don't know who you are, but I love the way you think, or whatever it is, there's, there's a dopamine rush for an attaboy. That's why teachers gave you gold stars, okay? It feels good, it feels really good to be validated. So the solution for, for Facebook, the solution for, for social media, 
is not to regulate who posts or what they post. Don't leave the speech alone. It's not the speech that's the problem. The problem is the algorithm. The problem is the script. The problem is also that these companies have too many pieces of data about you. See, exactly what you're worried about with the vaccine, which is a lie, that the vaccine has some sort of microchip that collects information about you and your DNA and your emotions and where you go and what you do and what you think. No, that's happening on social media. That's been going on for more than 10 years now. That's been going on a really stinking long time. And the way that you turn that down or off is by limiting how many data points any company can have about you. Should any company know your religion? Should any company know your favorite color? Should any company know anything like that about you? Hell no. So you limit how much data they can have on you. And then you actually legislate the script, the algorithm, that is a set of instructions that responds with very specific instructions based on you, your personality profile. That's how you stop it. But now it's you and you. You're alone in a room. Do you really believe that the best way forward for you, the best way forward for this country, the best way forward for anybody is to continue to engage in violent rhetoric or bullying? Or do you think that it would be better if everyone was invested in and you're, you could get 12 weeks of paid leave, your kids could go to preschool, you wouldn't spend more than 7% of your total income on daycare ever? Which is better? Bullying and violence and being aggravated and agitated all the time because you're being exposed to bullcrap or an investment in you and your family and your roads and your bridges and your airport and your tunnels and your uh, tax status. An investment in you, a middle class tax cut for people with children and a middle class tax cut for people without children. How do you, which, which is going to serve you? That's why you should start dialing your Republican senators, red states, and tell them you thought it through. And you want this money. You want to see the price of prescription drugs negotiated down with the awesome, awesome power of your government doing the negotiations. You have to call them and tell them, you know what? I'm a senior, I paid my whole life, I want to return on my investment. I paid taxes my whole life, I paid into Medicare, I paid into Social Security. Uh, you know what? I need glasses, I need a hearing aid, I can't afford $7,000, and I can't hear my kids on, their, on the phone, okay? And they had to move away from this podunk town because there's no work here, and now I can't talk to my grandkids because I can't hear them. Do something about that. Start dialing, because if we, honestly, I don't, I'm so tired of trying to figure out what Kirsten Cinema's thing is. She's a one, she's a one-term senator. You understand that, right? This whole fit of hers is uh, not playing well in Arizona. Arizona needs this investment. Arizona is another place with a lot of senior citizens. Arizona is a place that would like to see prescription drug prices come down. Arizona is a place where they would like to see hearing aids and eyeglasses and dental work included in Medicare benefits, which we can totally afford. Every economist tells us that. I'm an economist. We can afford $3.5 trillion. We could afford even more than $3.5 trillion, including paying for some of it with tax increases, Medicare reforms, and also you know, some borrowing because these are investments and interest rates are really low. From an economic perspective, it can be big. But you know, Lawrence, if all we could get is $2 trillion, you can do a lot with $2 trillion. You can dramatically reduce child poverty. You can take nearly a gigaton of emissions out, carbon emissions, every year you can make healthcare more affordable for millions of people so 
you know, two trillion dollars isn't just better than nothing. Um, two trillion dollars, you could do really meaningful things. Get on the phone. Get on the email. Send them a message. Especially if you're in a red state with two red senators. Tell them enough already. You thought about it. You deserve better. Because you do. It's just not their idea, so they don't like it. Well, too bad you do. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.